How's it going, New World? Sephir here, and we are back with another video. Today we will be taking a look at the end game in New World. So I see a lot of people ask me, where is the end game? What is the end game? And we know there's some issues going on with some things being disabled, but I wanted to give you an overall view and outlook of the game, as I find it personally really fun and there's tons of stuff to do. And I wanted to give some guidance to players who are now hitting level 60, or maybe you're getting close to 60 and you want to start considering some of these things before you get there so that you know exactly what you need to do when you actually reach that destination. So the end game is quite interesting, and I think the first thing we will take a look at is professions, uh, because they seem to be very important in the end game. Two professions that stand out to me the most would be stone cutting, and the reason for this is stone cutting has the ability to make gems for your gear to be socketed, but it also, most importantly, has the ability to make tuning orbs. And tuning orbs are what are going to allow you to enter the in-game content and dungeons. So you need to have 200 stone cutting to make the rune stone, which allows you to make keys for Lazarus and Garden expeditions. So the first thing that's required in in-game is going to be 200 stone cutting. And by that logic, it will require you to have at least 125 in Arcana so that you can craft some of these quintessence, the purple kind, that are used to make some of the stone cutting recipes and things along the way. And while you're at that, I would strongly recommend you get up to 150 Arcana so that you can have health potions for yourself as well as potions like Corruption and Blight Tenectures, which will allow you to do the endgame content on the hard difficulty and survive in portals. And you can also make like regen potions and damage boost coatings in the slightly upper levels. So realistically, you probably need to get up here to 162 or 161, and that would probably be your best bang for your buck on this perfection. Uh, the reason why is that these coatings give you a max damage boost to monsters of that type. And the damage boost is quite significant. I believe it's like 15%. So this combined with some other factors will allow you to, instead of struggling through the dungeons, you will be able to clear them. And instead of struggling with the arena timers, you will actually be able to meet the DPS check. And yes, there are DPS checks. They are very hard and real. So those are the first two things I would like to look at is just those trade skills that are mandatory. And then from there, you would enter an optional part. And this is going to be, you need to pick an income profession. And in my opinion, income is going to be in this refining category. I would strongly recommend smelting as it allows you to make Asmodium, which is a key component in crafting a lot of late game armor. Some people think that Void Bent is the best. Uh, that's not true. Void Bent is not the best. Void Bent is just the most convenient, easy piece that you can get early on that allows you to have high stats and high luck, which would let you find some of the rarer ingredients, so to say, that are you're going to need to create the better items. So Void Bent is a great like introductory step to high level gear it is not the end game gear so let's be very clear on that the end game gear gear is going to come from asmodium and 24 hour cooldowns like phoenix weave runic leather and that's going to be all these professions here on this left side the refining professions so if you can get them all and use the cooldowns daily great that's really good but it does require a lot of maintenance and a lot of farming. Most people are not going to be able to keep up with that. So just picking one would be great. You can choose any of them. Again, I would prefer smelting because of Asmodium being the one that is required the most by a lot of these crafts. The next thing we have to look at is your gathering professions. I'd recommend getting them all up to 200 at some point. So you have the option to go and get materials when they're available, when you see them in the world and just generally when they appear around you or in a dungeon or something like that, you never know when you're gonna need to make money or you find some sort of a rare resource that you can trade to other people who can use them. And this will all help you along the way. Fishing is the one exception as it's used for cooking and high level recipes. But currently the best stat food in my opinion is the 40 con food, which does not require fishing. It just requires 
uh, rabbits, essentially, and uh, that one's not too hard to get. Uh, cooking is a profession that you get for free, kind of. You just level it up and make your own meals. Uh, so we'll just throw that one as a freebie for everybody as it levels up very quickly and it's not hard to do at all. But it is something that is sort of required for the end game because you need to get that stat boosting food, but more importantly, you need the luck boosting food for your logging, mining, and you know whatever your profession is that you're doing. So it will be important for you to get that along the way. These other professions are not necessary, but you may want to pick one to specialize in, especially if you have a home in a strong territory, as you can become a master of your own craft and make a lot of money on the auction house. So if that is your goal, pick one of these and go really special in it. So one of these, furnishing, arcana, jewel crafting, engineering, armoring, or weaponsmithing. They're all highly profitable. It just takes a long time to do that particular task. Uh, so that is what it's going to be in terms of professions. And now we'll take a look at what it is in the end game, like what you're trying to do. So everyone's going to start at 500 gear score roughly. That's like base level 60 drops. Your best thing to do when you first hit 60 is going to be you're going to hit up zones that I call minor daily routes. And that's going to be the Scorch Mines right here in Shattered Mountain. This is a good zone. It's like level 62 roughly with some 65s. There's a lot of treasure chests. So you're going to get your gear score increases by killing monsters above level 60 that are elite. And they're going to start dropping you increasing gear score. So you need to get up your watermark. We have several videos talking about watermark. Feel free to check out the channel and look into the past for that. You will be able to get a full explanation on how it works. But the quick TLDR is the more elites you kill that are high level and the more chests that you loot the better your chances are going to be of finding higher gear score items. So keep looting stuff, keep killing stuff. And that's why these daily routes exist. So this is the first minor daily route. This is good to about 550 to 560 gear score. Once you are at that milestone on your pieces, you do not want to do this very much anymore. There are some arena key components that come from here, but you should have plenty by the time you finish that. The next minor place is going to be uh, malevolence here in Eden's Grove. It's about that 62 level, some 65s. Again, this is another place where arena key components come from. You will need a few of them. You may have to hit this place up from time to time, but there's nothing too special about it. So it's, it's going to fall under that minor category. The next place is going to be in Great Cleave. This is going to be this, um, Dead Fool's Pass area all the way up to Nihilo Village and this Mangled Pox Gate. But it just has a bunch of like level 60, 62 elites. It does have a source of one of the corrupted runes, which is an arena key component. So again, you will be going here occasionally to stock up on those components for the keys. It also has a few chests and some Ori Calcum along the way, which may be a decent route for you to go. But take a group of like 5 to 10 to all these places. Especially when you first hit 500 gear score and farm them out because they're going to be giving you gear score increases. And then when you hit a certain threshold, like we talked about 550, 560, you're going to need to move on to the big boy areas. And I'll show you what those are here in a bit. But we still have a few more minor ones. Uh, this place is called the Imperial Palace. It also falls under the minor uh, daily route category. It is a good place for 62 plus elites. There are a lot of 65 elites in the later part. There's a boss over here near this North Palace Shrine and one at the top of the Imperial Palace. And the best place about, or the best thing about this place is that it will give you a lot of cooking recipes. There are tons of provision crates and provision stockpiles in this region. And it is my personal place where I went to to get the 2000 mining luck food the 40 strength and 40 stamina recipe for cooking. This is the place to go. It also is a great place for resources like uh, housing items. Uh, it, it tends to give a lot of furnishing things. I don't know why, just furnishing and food. That, that's what this place is for. Uh, it does have some minor gear increases, but again, the cutoff for this place is probably like 560 or something like that, and then you won't need to go there. There are no runes or arena key components in this area currently. Uh, another place to look at is going to be the Eternal Pools, which is right here in this area. There are arena key components for this, specific to the Protector's Arena, which should be over here. Uh, this is an okay place to go only for the arena key components. It does have some high-level monsters, but you will need quite a lot of people here as the 
bear and the tentacle are very powerful. I would recommend at least 15 people going to the zone to clear this out. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And then the other minor place would probably be... I think that's actually it. There's no more other minor places. So we'll move into major places. So the major places that you need to do every day is going to be Mirgard because there are tons of 65 plus elites here, even 66 elites, specifically the priest at the top of Opulence. And there is a secondary priest that's on the ground uh, right around this little area here where the mouse is a little bit to the east of Upper Haro. Uh, these two have very high item pool drop rates as well as drop rates for uh, profession gear like plus two to arcana things like that so make sure you check out this area there are tons of elite chests all around here as well as greater portals which we will touch on in a bit but this is a your primary high level loot so you want to do all your other farms and then hit this one up at the end of the day because you will get the biggest gear score increases from here and this is good all the way up to 591 gear score which seems to be the cap right now there doesn't seem to be any 600 gear score pieces dropping from what I can see. Everyone seems to be locked at 591. So the final major place is going to be over here in the Siren Strand. It's going to be the Fordrift Castle. <clears throat> excuse me. Fordrift Castle and the uh, Spire of Mellow Pool. Blah, 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 blah. Yep, whatever that is. And uh, just make sure you check out and clear this place. Uh, there is several bosses located along this path on both the right and left side. So my suggestion is to run straight to the boss, AoE all the mobs down with a big group of like 15, grab the chest, and then move on. And you'll get through this area pretty quickly. Um, at the top here, there is a siren guy that guards the gate and a giant brute. Those are highly farmed because they drop high item level pieces. And then all the way at the top, there is a final level 66 boss who is really good to kill. He drops tons of legendaries and uh, high eye level gear score items. So this is the other major daily route that you need to cover. So keep that in mind. At the very least, make sure you get your two majors done. If you have time for anything else, you can focus on the minor ones, uh, but make sure you hit those two up every day. So now we'll talk about gear score before entering an expedition. The expeditions are like Lazarus Instrumentality and the Garden of Genesis up here at the top. These are the two primary dungeons. There are three arenas, which is going to be the Monoculus Clef Cleft, uh, which is the Spriggan Arena. And then there is the Protector's Arena down here in Sirens. And then finally the Sirens actual arena, which would be the Amphitheater. Um, there is a very high gear cap check on the arenas. The arenas are actually harder than the dungeons. Garden of Genesis is clearable with about 525 gear score, maybe a bit higher, uh, as long as you have a good group who knows mechanics. Lazarus Instrumentality requires a bit more than that, as it does have a healer check at the end, which is very hard to accomplish, and also a tank check, uh, because you need that laser from the last boss to be on the tank, on the tank uh, because you will be able to survive that laser dot and burn the boss down. He has a DPS check mechanic where you simply run out of time and if you do not kill him fast enough you will not kill him. As well as the boss Scylla being quite difficult for most groups as she does have a few actual mechanics that you need to follow and adjust to. So I would recommend gear score of maybe like 550, 560 for Lazarus instrumentality. And then the arenas are a whole nother beast in themselves. So they're actually quite difficult. They require you to have three houses and a trophy in every house for that monster type, as well as the consumable, the tenature from alchemy to increase the maximum damage boost uh, by 15%. So with the three trophies at max rank, you would have a 45% damage boost. And then adding in the tenature would be another 15%, bringing you to 60%. There are weapons in the game that have damage to a specific monster type, and they are very strong for that encounter. That will add you another 15 to 20% damage type for the monster. And then using a weapon that the monster is weak against... For example, um, in the Spriggan Arena, he is weak against slashing and fire damage. So if you're using a great axe or a hatchet, or you're using a fire staff, 
or you're using a great axe that has a fire gem in it, you're gonna be doing a lot more damage by 20 to 30% more. So as you can see with all of these factors combined, you can get up to 100% damage bonus. And the way arenas work is that it is a 15 minute timer to get into the arena and kill the boss. And some of the bosses heal up, they have DPS checks, so they are quite difficult. I would recommend having a nice damage boost to that boss going in and make sure that you are prepared because the last thing you want to do is waste your arena key. So make sure that you have between 50 and 75% damage bonus increase at least. I know the tier 3 trophies are very hard to get right now, but at least having tier 1 trophy in every house will guarantee you 5% for each house bonus damage boost. And if you can manage to get your hands on the second upgrade, it'll be 10% for each house. Or, or no, maybe it wasn't 10, it was like 7 or something like that. Um, I think my math is a bit off on that. I believe it actually scales up to 10%, so it, it's a 30% damage boost in total for the majors, but uh, you get the point, right? The point is that with all of these bonuses combined, you're going to be doing pretty close to double damage, right? Uh, no matter which way you swing it. So make sure you have all that stuff prepared before you go into this area. Uh, so... That's going to be a thing that you're going to need to have is three houses with trophies in every house. It will also help you gather rare mining ingredients like void ore and uh, tolvium and uh, cinnabar when you have mining luck trophies in all three of your houses. So spend some time to upgrade your trophies as that will be an end game activity and you will need to get all of that stuff done. So with all of that out of the way. The only things we have left are now the portals, which appear on the map. You see these greater portals. They are currently disabled, but when they are enabled, you need to do these because they are the best source of Azoth. They are the best source of gear coming from the boxes, and they are the only source of corrupted fragments, which allow you to craft and create tuning orbs to enter the endgame expeditions, aside from the original tuning orbs that you get for going to a dungeon for a quest. And there are a very limited amount of those, so you will need to farm these portals, the greater ones specifically, in order to get access to additional content or dungeon runs. So these are gonna be very paramount. Make sure you get in there and grind these out when they open again. They open them, then shut them down, and open them, then shut them down. Now they're shut down again. So just keep an eye out for that, because the moment that comes up, it's going to be a great source for you to get a gear score bump and catch up to all these other players. It will also be a fantastic source for you to get Azoth and uh, rare components for trophies and other things. So that will pretty much cover rifts. You can do the smaller rifts currently. They are open and they give gear score increases and Azoth right now. So it is a good way to fill up your Azoth. It's about 30 for each portal that you close for the level 65s. So if you're hurting for traveling Azoth or whatever you need to respect your weapons, this is a great place to go. There's tons of these little portals and you can uh, kind of knock them out and get a gear score gain while getting Azoth and reputation at the same time. So it's not a bad deal for you there. The final thing would be Outpost Rush, which comes from any faction um, faction leader. I, I, what do you call these guys? Quest giver in town. So you would simply go over here and talk to him in any town. It does not matter which. And you'll be able to sign up for the Outpost Rush. Uh, Outpost Rush is basically, it's kind of like League of Legends and Arathi Basin in the same game it's 20 verse 20 and it's got a very similar pve map style to league of legends even with a baron buff so you would simply go here and hit join and as you can see the game mode is currently disabled because they are working on fixing some of that stuff it was open the other day and then they shut it down again because something wasn't wasn't quite right but it is a fantastic source of gear i've gotten 589 out of there just yesterday 591 from the box, you get about 350 gold and 258 Zoth every time you participate in it. So make sure to keep an eye out for that, as it will be 
very good for you to gain resources and you can purchase a lot of the ingredients that you need and the upgrades that you need with this gold by just simply running this pvp um, and even if you're not a pvp fan it is a great place to go because there's tons of ways that you can win this outpost rush by being a pve player by going out and killing the monsters gaining the azoth in there for your team and using it to summon giant monsters and build turret upgrades on the fort and you can participate and and kind of help that way so you don't have to be you know the sweatiest pvp one-on-one -on -one dueler in the world but you do need to be smart about the gameplay and how you go about it i love this game mode it's so much fun and i will come out with a video on it as soon as it is re-enabled because it is a blast i'm having so much fun doing it and we, we were queuing five man pre-mades we were trying to all queue at the same time to see if everyone could get in the same game and fight each other and uh, all kinds of crazy stuff but it is a blast let me tell you this is definitely one of the better parts and i would love to see more pvp game modes especially ranked game modes coming in the future as i feel that that really makes this game super fun and breathes a lot of life into it uh, so that's probably gonna be my go-to uh, for that aspect that pretty much covers it so your aim is to get up some of these professions uh, so we'll talk a little bit briefly about items but there are items in each category that are very powerful on a chance. So if I were to go here and I see like an Ori Calcum shield or an Ori Calcum great axe, when I craft this great axe, it's gonna start about 550 gear score level. But if I am a 200 level weaponsmith with full 200 or with full bonus to armor to uh, weaponsmithing, with all the trophies in my houses and the food buff that gives me armor smith or weaponsmithing uh, skill, then I have the potential to create a 600 gear score axe with some very nice perks and benefits on it. So that means that a lot of your in game and best in slot weapons are going to be coming from these crafting professions. So you can find a buddy or a guild member and give him the materials and have him craft it for you. Or you can take matters into your own hands and level up one of these professions and start creating items. And if you get lucky, you can win the lottery and find the best item in the game. You can slap that bad boy up on the auction house and make a hundred thousand gold, whatever you want. Name your own price because everyone is going for these pieces right now. So you can do the same with shields you can do the same with armor smithing as well if you go over here you can make ori calcum armor all the way down at the bottom and it will have the same effect as a lot of these oh it's actually gonna be yeah here we go ori calcum like plate boots you can win the lottery with that as well uh, just make sure that you have the proper upgrades and skill upgrades you will see on the top right when you go to create a piece what the gear score range can be and the higher skill bonus you have through food, trophies, a gear, and actual skill, the higher that item level is going to be and the higher odds it's going to be something very good and worth a lot of money. So make sure you take a look out for those. The same applies for Arcana. You can make fire staffs like Ori Calcum fire staffs uh, and life staffs. So, you know, keep an eye out for those materials. That's going to be where your best in slot gear is actually going to come from. Again, it's not this void bent. It's actually Ori Calcum armor with the specific preferred stats for PvP or for PvE. So some people are going to want two sets that's going to have certain things on it that they prefer and want. I'm sure there's going to be a best in slot build out there. So you're just going to have to dig around and wait for some people to identify exactly what that is going to be. But if I was a guessing man, I would assume that a lot of the best in slot PvP stuff would have this stuff like resilient, where critical hits deal less damage to you. And I would also assume that best in slot PvE stuff is going to have critical chance and things like that that's going to boost your raw damage output. Okay, that's pretty much everything and a summary of the end game currently. So, in definition, you need to do a lot of farms to get that gear score mark up. Keep your eye out for trophy upgrades and pieces. And pick some of these professions to dive into. Not all of them. Pick some of them. Pick a couple. And that will help you along the way to getting this perfect gear. And which you will be able to use that in PvP and PvE to run instances and arenas very quickly. And also to have a very strong fighting chance in PvP combat, which will definitely give you the edge. Thanks for watching, everyone. I know this has been quite a bit of information. I appreciate you sticking with me all the way through. Um, 
definitely appreciate all the support that we have been getting on the channel. Thank you for subscribing, liking, hitting the bell, and all those things that everyone has done. We still have that join button if you're interested in becoming a member today with special badges, emojis, and special perks, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. We also have the Discord where you can ask me any questions and reach out to the community to get tons of gold farm secrets, tons of in-game best in slot secrets, and uh, content advice, whatever that may be. So make sure to keep your eyes open for that. I appreciate your time and have a good day, everyone.